Hey there, in this video I am going to show you the carving of mandibular second premolar that is of free cusp type or Y type. Uh, we have to take a wax block and mark the midline on each surface. Also label it as labial, lingual, mesial and distal. Now for the crown length we have to take 8.0 mm and 14.5 mm for the root length. Now we'll divide the crown part in three equal thirds that is occlusal, middle and incisal third. Now for the medial distal diameter of the crown at cervix we have to take 5.0 mm and at the contact area 7.0 mm. Now we have to draw a line like this to get a trapezoidal shape and we'll do the same for the lingual side. Now we will remove the excess part over here. We have got the trapezoidal shape and for the premolar added step is for the mesobuccal and distobuccal cusp. So we have to draw a line like this and we'll remove the extra part. Now for the buccolingual diameter of the crown we have to take 8.0 mm at the contact area and 7.0 mm at the cervix. Now we'll carve the buccal aspect and the mandibular second premolar presents a shorter buccal cusp than the first premolar with the mesobuccal and distobuccal cusp ridges showing angulation of less degree. And other features are similar as the first premolar.
of the lingual surface, the lingual lobes are developed to a greater degree, which makes the cusps longer. And the less of the occlusal surface may be seen from this aspect. In the tree cusp type, the lingual development brings about the greatest variation between the two teeth. The mesolingual and distolingual cusps are present with the former being the larger and the longer one in most cases. A groove is between them extending a very short distance on the lingual surface and usually centered over the root. In case of the tree cusp type, the occlusal aspect appears square lingual to the buccal cusp ridges when highly developed. The square type has three cusps that are distinct and the buccal cusp is the largest, mesolingual cusp is next and the distolingual cusp is the smallest. So we have to carve like that and each cusp has well formed triangular ridges separated by deep developmental grooves and these grooves converge in a central pit and form a Y shape on the occlusal surface. The central pit is located midway between the buccal cusp ridge and the lingual margin of the occlusal surface and slightly distal to the central point between the mesial and distal marginal ridges. Supplemental grooves and depressions are often seen radiating from the developmental grooves and occasionally a groove crosses one or both of the marginal ridges. Now the crown portion is complete and will now move forward towards the root portion. Now we'll draw the outline of the root. The root from the buccal aspect is broader mesodistally. The lingual portion of the root is smoothly convex for most of its length. The root is longer and in most cases slightly convex on the mesial surface. However, the convexity is not always present and the apex of the root is usually more blunt on the second premolar.
the distal aspect might show the developmental depression so we have to carve like this now we'll draw the cervical outline so this was the carving of the mandibular second premolar of three cusp type hope you have liked this video and watch my next video for the mandibular second premolar two cusp type if you have liked this video please like share and subscribe and press the bell icon for the more video updates